Hello, this is Miss Cindy from the Alexandria Museum of Art, and I hope you're ready for another AMOA Family Friday. So today we are going to be continuing to talk about the elements of art and how you can use them to create amazing works of art. Today we're going to be talking about form. Now, a house is a kind of form, so we're going to be reading a book called Creaky Old House. All right. This is a book by Linda Ashman, and it's illustrated by Michael Chesler. Our house is kind of old and creaky. Porch is sloping, roof is leaky, windows drafty, shutters peeling. There's a crack across the ceiling. Paint's a little chipped and faded. Might say it's dilapidated. Still, each one of us, all nine, thinks this house is fine, just fine. Do you share your house with a lot of people or you just have a few people in your house? I don't have so many people in my house right now, but nine people is a lot of people. Let's see how they do. We love the yard, the old oak trees, the favorite spots and memories. Lou first toddled down this hall. John drew pictures on the wall. In the parlor by the phone, Pa records how much we've grown. Do your parents do that where they mark how far, how tall you're getting? Oh my God, we used to do that with my kids too. Okay, so here's the quiet corner nook where mama goes to read a book in the ancient fraying rug where Gran and Grandpa jitterbug. See, they're dancing. Jitterbug's like a kind of dance, an old timey dance. This is where we carved our names, where Uncle Bob builds model trains and the giant clawfoot tub where Dudley gets his monthly scrub. Here's the trapdoor Lizzie found, the banister we all slide down, the hallway where we like to race and my secret hiding place. Do you have a secret hiding place? I wish I did. We love our home in every way. Or did. That is until yesterday. Pa was headed out the door when clang! The doorknob hit the floor. Looks like it needs a new screw. But we've got one in the shed. We, sw we swiped the cobwebs, blew the dust, tossed the moldy sandwich crust. Ew. Dug through hammers, wrenches, tacks, cardboard boxes, stacks and stacks. Searched through buckets, bins and pails, sorted washers, nuts and nails. And then at last we found a screw. Aha, said Ma, this one should do. We ran inside and down the hall. We'll fix it in no time at all. But we were wrong. It was too small. Uh-oh, little Lizzie sang. John said, drat. Lou said, bang. Seems to me, drawled Uncle Bob, we'd better get another knob. And so we eyed the knob and door, then marched to Wally's hardwood store. That's Wally's, built in 1910, and never cleaned, not once since then. We searched through hinges, levers, latches, doorstops, doorbells, bolts, and sashes, brackets, knockers, address plates, pulls and handles, and crates and crates. We pick through doorknobs, brass and steel, amber, violet, emerald, teal, porcelain, crystal, egg-shaped round, a knob for every door in town. Grandpa hollered, this is it. We'll fix that doorknob lickety split. The trouble was, uh oh, there's always trouble. It didn't fit, kind of saw that coming. Grandma frowned and shook her head. Guess we need a new door and so our 18 tired feet trudged outside and down the street to Dorothy's door emporium, weighing choices one by one. Oh, it's kind of a lot. It's gotten to be a lot, huh? We studied every door design, considered alder, maple, pine, mirrored, louvered, painted, leaded, fancy doors with jewels embedded, craftsman, cottage, stable, Dutch, bifold panel, way too much. This should do the trick, Pa cried. Our finest, Dorothy said with pride. I bet she did. What a shame. It's too wide. 
Nine faces stared in disbelief. Grandma muttered, oh, good grief. Now, now, said Ma, it's not so bad. We'll move the door frame, just a tad. But then, said John, the couch won't fit. We'll have to shift that wall a bit. Fine, said Lou, but if we do, we'll have to move the stairway too. Okay, guys, this is getting crazy. They're gonna have to move their whole stairway. Let's see what happens. And so it went all afternoon. We huddled in the living room, squabbling over building plans, sketching maps and diagrams, building models out of blocks, toothpicks, and cardboard box. More, move that bookshelf, bump this wall, shift the den, extend the hall, push the kitchen back a smidge, better oven, bigger fridge, knock that closet, add three feet. How about a window seat? So I just wanna take a minute here. Parents who are watching, who've been through home improvement projects or renovations, you might be starting to twitch a little bit. I feel you, I feel you. Well, we're gonna go on. At last, we had a grand design that everybody loved, all nine. We voted to approve, but wait, when hands went up, we counted eight. Grandma bellowed, Lizzie's gone. Search the attic, hollered John. In the basement, Lou decreed. Everywhere, we all agreed. This family can't catch a break. Okay, 16 legs ran all around, inside, outside, up and down. Then to the front where Lizzie sat, grinning like a Cheshire cat. Well, I'll be, said Uncle Bob. Lizzie's gone and fixed that knob. Eight faces stared in disbelief, sighed Grandpa, Grandma. What a huge relief. Now it's like it was before. Don't need to buy that brand new door. Don't need a wider door frame then, or the bookshelves, or the den. Wouldn't need to build, move that wall. Wouldn't need to build at all. I never liked that new design, said Ma. Our place is fine, just fine. I love it as it is, said Lou. Grandpa smiled and said, me too. And so we tore the plans we'd made, mixed a batch of lemonade, marched across the creaky floor, out the slightly crooked door, settled on the old porch swing, a little bent and wobbling, and didn't change a single thing. All right, so. Do you live in an old house that's kind of creaky, but like super charming and you love it so much and you have your own hiding places? I used to live in a house like that when I was little too. So today we are going to build our own little houses. And, but first we are going to talk about how a shape becomes a form. But before we do that, guess what we have to do? That's right, we've got to do an art elements review. Artists use the elements of art to create amazing artwork. The first is line that Walter Anderson used to create these fish. Lines can create shapes like the ones we see to make up these dancers in this Nicholas Monroe piece. A three-dimensional shape is a form like this Dale Chihuly sculpture. Form can be suggested in a photograph or painting when an artist uses value, which are the lights and darks in an image. It can also influence the mood of a piece, like this photograph by Elmore Morgan. Artists like Francis Pave use color to create a mood in their image or depth or excitement. Color is a very important tool in an artist's toolbox. Space is the, Im the space inside an object, the positive space, and outside an object, the negative space. Notice how artist Arthur Secunda energizes the space outside of his figure in this image. Texture is how an artist de describes how something looks like it might feel. Notice the texture of these feathers in this Morris Taft Thomas sculpture. Let's talk about how something flat, a flat shape, can become form. A shape only has height and width. That's two-dimensional. The front of this box is a two-dimensional square. It's a shape. But if I take this box and put it back together, it will become a form. 
Now it has three dimensions, height, width, and it has depth. So it's a three-dimensional object. Many things that we have around our house are forms. Now that we know what a form is, let's, let's use one to create our own creaky old house. Maybe not so creaky as the one in the book. So I took a box. You can use a cereal box from your kitchen. I used a popcorn box and I split it apart to make it flat at the seam. You might have to cut yours down the edge of the box. You can have a grown-up help you if you need to, but if not, you can do it yourself. And now I'm just sort of flattening it out and I'm going to begin to tape it back together inside out. The inside of the box will be a little easier to glue things to, but you don't have to turn it inside out. You could always just glue it to the front of the box. Okay, and I'm taping it back together, just using a little masking tape, but you can use whatever kind of tape you might have. A packing tape might work, the kind you use to send packages, that might work as well. It'll just, this'll just give us a nice working space to create our house from. I'm gonna continue taping the sides and the top as well. So we have a nice closed box for our form. Okay, so now our box is all put together and we are going to begin making our house. So here's some supplies you're going to need. A ruler, some masking tape or packing tape, whatever you might have around the house. I use some various type uh, colors of construction paper. I used a pencil and some glue. Um, you can use stick glue or Elmer's glue. And I used various colors of markers. If you have colored pencils, whatever you might have. Um, if you don't have construction paper, you can also just use white paper and make designs on it with your colors. All right, and I used some scissors. Now I am going to line my box up on the edge of my paper. We're gonna do some tracing in this. So you're gonna take your pencil and make sure that you are holding your box down firmly, not pressing so hard to crush the box, but firm so that it won't move. That's an important tip for tracing, is to hold whatever you're tracing down firmly with your hand. Okay, so now, I've got a square that matches the size of the front and back of my box. And I'm gonna cut that out. Okay, and now, yes, I'm checking to make sure it fits my box. It does, that's great. So I'm gonna actually take this, you need two sides, because you have two, you have a front and back of your box. And I'm actually gonna trace that piece of paper so I will have two pieces of paper the same size. Now, once again, I am going to make sure that it's lined up with the edge of my paper and I'm gonna hold it down firmly and trace the line. Now, if your pencil happens to go up on your construction paper a little bit, that's okay, just keep holding it down firmly that happened to me a couple of times, so it's not the end of the world if your line sort of hops up on the paper or if it's not perfectly straight. That's okay. It just needs to cover the front of your box. Okay, so now I have a front and back to my house. I chose blue, but you can choose any color you want. Now I'm gonna do the other two sides, the side walls of my house. And I'm gonna repeat the same procedure. I'm gonna place that box down on my paper, hold it firmly down, and trace it. Okay, 
and I'm going to cut that out and I'm going to trace it again. So we're just repeating the same procedure we did for the first one. Remember to hold it down firmly and just trace. Sometimes tracing takes a lot of practice, but it's a really useful tool for something like this. Okay, we're gonna cut that second wall and now we're going to glue our pieces of paper to our box. We're gonna begin with the front of the house and I'm gonna get my Elmer's glue and I'm getting a craft stick. So you can spread your glue with a craft stick if you want to, if you have one. And I'm just gonna go around the edges of the front of the box, creating a little square and just so maybe a little dab in the middle. You don't need loads of glue, just a, just a line of glue around the edge. And now I'm gonna spread that out to the edges. And you could also use your finger if you don't have a craft stick. You just wanna have some paper towels around so that you can wipe your finger off afterwards. But yeah, if you don't mind getting your hands dirty, then that's perfectly fine. But now I've gotta wipe my fingers off. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna press my, I'm doing this with clean fingers. If you wiped your glue, you wanna wipe your finger off and then just pat your paper down. And we're gonna repeat that with all the different sides. Okay, so now the walls of my house are covered. Now I'm going to create some doors and windows. I decided to go with the yellow construction paper because I, I wanted to think about what the light might look like coming from inside the house and maybe it's a warm yellow light. You could always use white or whatever color you'd like. Um, and you can always use, if you're using white paper, of course you can just color it in. So I'm just kind of seeing where I want my door to be. How tall should my door be? You don't have to do exact measurements. And if you don't have a ruler, you can always just use a straight edge. But I'm just trying to think about how big I want those doors to be. Now, none of this has to be incredibly precise. You can simply draw the doors out freehand without using a ruler. That's totally fine. In fact, in a minute, I'm gonna get rid of that ruler and I am gonna just start freehanding my windows um, and the, the win inside of the windows and doors. So, And now I'm going to cut out my door and create enough windows for it as well. And as you can see, I've started drawing in the windows of my house and a little doorknob. And I'm gonna start, I got my marker and I'm just gonna start tracing the doors to me to make the window panes and the window itself. Just starting to color things in. And I'm gonna leave that doorknob yellow because maybe it's a, like a brass doorknob. See? Okay, and now I've colored my door. I've made that one brown. And look, I made a fancy red one for the front with the little dog inside. And then I'm working on my windows. And I'm just gonna go through and put it, um, just outline them in black. Again, whatever color you wanna use is totally fine. And you can draw things inside your windows. Okay, so now it's time to glue our doors and windows on. I am going to just figure out where I want them to be on the house. And then I'm gonna get a little glue and glue them. See, I went ahead and drew some plants in my windows. And I'm trying to figure out, do I want them to be first floor windows or second floor windows? You can think about all kind of details your house might have that you can add to the front or sides. I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on them, not a lot. And I'm gonna spread that out with the craft stick um, just to kind of get it spread out all over. And then I'm just gonna press them on there, again with clean fingers. So you don't want to get glue on the front of your thing. If you do, it's probably okay. Um, Elmer's dry is clear, so. All right, I'm just gonna pat those down. The house is already starting to have a little bit of personality. It's kind of exciting. Okay. And then I went around. Um, I've got, oh, I wanted to make some shutters. 
you know, shutters are a nice little accent that some houses have. So I just made some rectangles and drew some lines. And now we're thinking about our roof. So you're gonna fold your paper in half horizontally. So that's the short side. And check and see if it fits. Mine does, I'm very excited about that. It just, it's a little long, the paper's a little long. So I'm just gonna just do a line and I'm gonna cut enough so that it fits the house a little bit better. Okay. Now I want to make the sort of triangle that you have at the top of your house. I'm measuring the width of my house and I made a line and I'm going to take my paper and I'm gonna line it up with that line in the edge of the paper. Now this might be a good place to have a second set of hands to hold that steady for you. This is a little bit fiddly, this part, but then you're just gonna draw a line it doesn't have to be super perfect, but if you do have someone who can hold that steady for you, it'd be really helpful. All right. And then, yeah, I didn't get it quite. I didn't draw all the way that time, so I'm gonna have to try it again. Just making sure you're lining it up with the edge of the paper and that line that you drew. All right, so now I'm gonna cut that triangle out. And then of course, I'm gonna lay it down, trace it, and I'll have two of them, one for the front of the house and one for the back of the house. All right, so now I'm gonna glue that to the top using my Elmer's glue. And I'm gonna just open it up and just make glue a nice straight line. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfectly straight, but you just want it to be right at the top. And I'm gonna take my triangle and I'm gonna lay that on the top and just hold it for a second. Sometimes with Elmer's glue, with white glue, you can hold it and if it doesn't stick right away, just count to 10 holding it. And that usually gets it set enough for you to move it. Okay, now it's time to put our roof on. So I'm just gonna sit it on top and see where it touches. And I'm gonna lay some glue right along the side. Again, another line of glue, not a crazy amount of glue, just a little bit, just a line. And then I'm gonna press that down, count to 10. Oh, and I wanted to add a second or maybe third floor attic window to my house with a cat in it. All right, so my house is finished and I wanted to show you some examples of things you could add to your house. These are pictures I did took when I was teaching a group of families in New York. As you can see, some of them added a yard with a playground. You could do that with a piece of cardboard and they use different materials as you can see, but you can use a variety of materials to build your house. You could create entire neighborhoods just like these kids did. So you could take some time with your family and create a lot of different houses and maybe add some cool things that you find around the house and make yards and different kinds of fences. So just enjoy it, get creative. All right, thanks for joining us for another AMOA Family Friday. I hope you had so much fun today and hope you built a really, really fun house. And I look so forward to working with you every week so we are dying to see what you guys have been making. So if you want to share something, you can pop a picture into comments or you can email me a picture of what you've been doing at cindy, C-I-N-D-Y, at themuseum.org. All right, till next time, you guys be well, be safe, and keep making stuff together.